Hi, I'm Tobias Weber and I welcome you to my presentation about our paper Constraint Probabilistic Mask Learning for Task-Specific Undersampled MRI Reconstruction together with my co-authors Michael Ingrisch, Bernd Bischel and David Rügamer. This work is a collaboration between the Department of Statistics and the Department of Radiology, both located at LMU in Munich and also the Munich Center for Machine Learning. So to give a quick introduction, if you do an MRI, you don't just take an internal body picture of your patient. On a high level perspective, you collect frequencies and frequency space and translate it into image space using something like a Fourier transform. So on the left side, you see a depiction of this frequency space. And this is um, more or less also determined as the K space. And if you would translate this into image space, you would receive this uh, image of the head over here. So the disadvantage is that if you um, collect all the frequency in this case space, it will take a really long time to create the image that you want. So a technique someone would apply is called undersampling, where you accelerate acquisition time by selectively sampling data points in this case space. Obviously, if you don't have such a long acquisition time anymore, you have a reduced patient discomfort and also it would enable real-time imaging for interventional procedures. So in, in practice, you would apply some kind of mask on this case space that determines which points you would actually like to sample. And this is also called an undersampling mask. But as a trade-off, you will receive an image with decreased quality and also having artifacts like infolding, blurring, or distortions. And these are examples for actual masks that we use. Obviously, it's not Batman. So you would pay, probably have like something like a radial pattern, a 2D variational density, or also like a 1D Cartesian mask. But there are a lot of patterns that are applied in MRI reconstruction. The majority of research in deep learning focuses mostly on enhancing undersampled images. So these days, most methods include diffusion models or generative adversarial networks. And I also would like to mention loop which introduces a data-driven model to derive an enhanced image and an undersampling mask simultaneously. So this steers into the same direction as us. As in our paper, we propose something called probabilistic undersampling mask optimization. Instead of enhancing the actual undersampled MRI, we focus on learning the optimal discrete case space undersampling pattern directly. Our approach is a fully probabilistic framework and it's also end-to-end -end differentiable and we don't employ any neural network, so it's very lightweight and we enforce something called an acceleration factor, which is the number of active mask elements through a convex constraint. We double our framework PROM, short for probabilistic mask learning. As a first assumption, instead of following a distinct sampling pattern for a mask M, we assume that every mask element is the result of an independent Bernoulli experiment where each point has an individual probability theta. And exactly this distribution will be our optimization objective. And so if we sample some mask from this distribution, we can simulate the undersampled image by taking some other case space array and um, apply the mask to it over the Hadamard product, apply the inverse Fourier transform and obtain the magnitude image. And exactly this will also be our optimization routine. As said before, we optimize the posterior mask distribution after observing our data points for arbitrary loss functions L. So given some training data point X, we optimize our thetas directly by minimizing the expected loss. And usually we approximate this expected loss over Monte Carlo approximation. And as you see here, we have some kind of constraint here. And the question is, why do we need this constraint? And so the, the reason is because without further constraint, the optimal solution would be just to set all thetas to one because this would approximate the fully um, sampled image. So we introduce the number of active elements, which is derived from the acceleration factor and we limit those number of active elements by the sum of all thetas. This sum kind of resembles an L1 penalty. So if we observe the distribution of weights during optimization, we see that um, the solution will be very sparse and has values from reaching mostly from zero or one. So we start from uniform distribution and we see that the solution has either zeros or one in the end. A major challenge in our optimization procedure is that we cannot propagate gradients through our stochastic masks, so we apply the Gumbel softmax trick tailored to our Bernoulli distribution to achieve exactly this. So this trick consists of two major components, the first being that 
the thetas are contained in a deterministic node here, and stochasticity is um, created by sampling from a Gumbel distribution, which is contained here. Additionally, the indicator function is approximated over a sigmoid function, whereas its softness is being controlled by a temperature parameter. In our case, we need the binary mass directly and not a soft approximation of it. So we apply something called the straight through trick, which um, allows to propagate the hard mass, which is obtained over an indicator function, but neutralizes the impact of the soft mass. And with these two operations blocking gradients, the indicator function and the stop gradient function, we can actually back propagate gradients over the soft approximation, but actually propagate forward the hard mask. As a last step, we act need a way to actually enforce the constraint that we have introduced before. And for this, we utilize projected gradient descent, which in the end uh, projects the Bernoulli parameters into a space that fulfills the constraint. And for this, we adopt the method prop mask of show et al. And the method is rather non-trivial, so we um, recommend to check our paper for the details. And um, in practice, this um, projected gradient descent leads to actually reducing the number of active mass elements to a really sparse solution, but at the same time, the SLIM of the uh, reconstructed image stays rather consistent. In this figure, you see the progress of our actual optimization routine with the example of a heart from the ACDC dataset. And uh, we start from a uniformly distributed undersampling mask and then the optimization starts. Um, first, it is unconstrained, which resembles a very perfect reconstructed image. And then our constraint kicks in and enforces the acceleration factor over time. And in the end, we derive at an undersampling mask that is derived from the actual data sample. In our experiments, we found that reconstruction can definitely profit from domain-specific undersampling mask, as you can see here for heart, brain, and knee MRIs. And um, you may notice that um, the heart and the brain consist more of elliptic shapes. So um, the derived masks are kind of a bit similar, whereas the knee with a lot of vertical and horizontal lines has a more distinct pattern in comparison to the other two data sets. We compared our method against an equispace mask, a 2D Gaussian mask, and iterative gradient sampling. And we noticed that especially for extremely high acceleration factor here for um, 32. We see that uh, our approach has less blurring and less artifacts than the other compared methods. In a different experiment, we modified the loss function of PROM to derive a mask to maximize segmentation performance with a pre-trained and frozen unit. Through its flexible nature, we can um, employ different objectives and downstream tasks and are not limited to visual reconstruction. Notice that the derived mask having a segmentation loss completely differ from the mask that we derived for, uh, previously using the mean squared error, which implies that using different downstream tasks involve also different domain specific masks. In conclusion, optimized case by sampling as provided by our method enables better and faster MR data acquisition, which could be useful for high-speed interventions and also pathology localization. Additionally, our minimalistic and model-free strategy derives masks in seconds as we don't use any large neural network, and this uses only low resources, which further reduces deployment barriers. In future work, we would like to investigate the effects of prompt as an encapsulated layer in larger architectures, where we could, for example, jointly optimize the reconstruction itself. And also, we would like to integrate prior domain knowledge into our prior distribution so that we could, for example, use uh, radial trajectories. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you at my poster.